Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. I am Jam from Acquia and this is the video extension of the Acquia podcast. Today I have with me Rick DeBoer from Australia, Ryan Cross, normally from Australia but right now on the west coast of the United States, Susan Rust and Carl Shirer. These four are the crew that makes up top shelf modules. I've been thinking a lot lately about this idea of sustainable development um, in the project and our project has been more or less feeding off of people's ability to volunteer and a lot of us have rent and mortgages and, 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 and bills to pay and how do we professionalize uh, development of the platform and is that the way to go for for our project. Well, look, I, I think this is a big part of what we saw as uh, Top Shelf being able to, to, to contribute some solutions to, um, is being able to actually provide a funding and a, and a revenue source for module for developers in the contrib space. Um, we're seeing people like Alex Pot who are actually getting, you know, he's working full time on, on, on Drupal Core, and therefore people have actually started um, contributing to him to do that. Um, you know, but there, you know, there's not a lot of other people that, in fact, there's nobody that I know of that's actually doing that in Contrib. Um, and most people, at this point, we're seeing a lot of people who, anybody that kind of comes into a contributed module and wants either support or a new feature, um, a lot of maintainers are kind of of the mind, well, I'll do it if you pay me. And um, that can give a really negative experience to a lot of people. Um, and it also kind of opens up the question, well, you know, is this really open source? Um, but I think it, it, it makes it really unsustainable for people. And, um, you know, one of the things that I've considered is, you know, we want to build professional websites, so we need professional tools to do that. Um, and at the same point, you want to make sure that, you know, as, as a site owner, you want to make sure that your website is built on a really strong foundation. And if you're potentially using a lot of uh, contributed modules and they're not well maintained. Um, there's potentially either performance problems or you know uh, a lot of people don't realize um, you know the security implications of, for example, using dev only code as opposed to formal releases. Um, that can really leave some major sites on a pretty shaking foundation. Um, and I think that that's something that more and more site owners are beginning to to realize. And we hope that they're going to be able to um, facilitate, you know, more people working on Contrib to make that foundation stronger. One of the uh, things that I like about Top Shelf Modules is that it is an interesting, sustainable model in some ways that we didn't expect. Uh, we went to Portland uh, to DrupalCon thinking that we were just going to do this by the maintainer of beer, which is a little bit like an app store model, but um, a community app store model. Uh, throw Rick five dollars for using revisioning kind of thing. But what we found is that the request from shops was, please take my partially finished code. So every uh, high-powered Drupal shop run, writes tons of, of modules for projects. Amazing code, right? Brilliant work. But it's not polished enough to get released, so they've left it sitting around in the sandbox. It gets musty and moldy. They want to release it, but they don't. So one of the great things is that they can donate those modules to Top Shelf Modules. Um, we'll help find them a vetted maintainer. Their brand gets recognized. Their contribution gets recognized. We get awesome sauce um, that is very unintended. And that is kind of a really, it's kind of why our, our logo has kind of that recycling kind of feel. Because we curate the modules, we uh, surface grade modules, we get maintainers adopting these modules and we find new talent um, in the maintainer pool. And then we hope that, that um, the money will come. So 
we're kind of building it in hope that people go, yeah, you know what, this needs to be a line item in my project that um, we throw money back at the computer. You know, we, we talked with a lot of people when we launched this idea between Portland and today. Um, but what was interesting was everyone has a different pain in contrib. We're all feeling some kind of pain, but uh, even like a large shop versus a small shop, they had different uh, attitudes and experiences with it. So we, really, we had to come up with uh, benefits and a message for each one of those. So we have like five or six now. But a freelancer is very different from a small shop, from a large shop, from a client, from uh, a third-party integration vendor. Based on what Susan was saying before, um, I think one of the things that's also really interesting when you look at how websites are built in other systems such as WordPress or Joomla, it's, it's very, very common for there to be a line item for people to purchase the modules that, um, that they're using for a site. Um, and that could you know, be a couple hundred dollars for, for small sites or potentially more for really expansive sites. And when you consider that an average Drupal site, it's, it's not uncommon for you to have 100 modules on a site. Um, being able to give a small line item back to these modules um, you know, is trivial when you consider the amount of time and effort that it's taken um, for, a, for a large website to go live. So, I mean, and particularly the, the model that we're looking at compared to something like WordPress or Joomla is that those people are actually paying for modules that are effectively, um, they're still using the GPL, but they're effectively somewhat proprietary in the fact that they're not collaborating and, and working together on these modules. Um, so, you know, when somebody finds a security hole or something like that, if it's not uh, a free module um, on WordPress, people don't typically contribute those things back. Whereas in Drupal, that ethos is completely different, but it leaves us with this hole that there's not a funding channel back to that. And I think this is something that we can actually change. It seems to me that, uh, that we're trying a couple of different things to find sustainability in Drupal, and there seem to be um, pragmatic models and kind of altruistic or, or, or idealistic models to professionalize or to, to support the development of the platform. On the pragmatic side, I think we've got top shelf modules. I suspect that Drupal Fund Us has a similar amount of pragmatism in there. The Git tip or Drupal Association membership um, or somehow line items in contracts. I'm not sure. Some of these are feel like nice to haves, but I think that we're searching. All of us were searching for the really compelling, obvious value add for everyone. Well, let me talk about the funding platforms. Um, so we've obviously looked at all the other ones as well, just like you have. Um, Git tip is very nice. Uh, it really only works though, like you, we've seen with Alex, where it's easy to say that Alex's work is valuable to the community. We can all agree on that. So whatever money I give him is well spent. Um, and I think we all agree that he provides thousands of dollars of value a week and should be getting a lot more. But if you look at the graph on Git tip, here I make a little, it goes down like very quickly. Um, so he makes 375. Uh, Patrick D, I think, comes in at about 100. And then it quickly drops. The fifth or sixth person is already down to 20. And the eighth person is like $5 a week. Um, so, and that's because it's hard to say, like, well, I know you do good work, but what are you doing with these 10 or $20 that I give you? And why should I keep giving you that money? And why should I give you that money instead of somebody else giving you that money? Um, and so ultimately, I think GitTip is convenient, but it doesn't solve the problem very well, where I can give you $5. That's not a very difficult uh, transaction to make happen. GitTip just makes it a little easier to work on. Um, Drupal Fund Us, uh, very different model, uh, where it's more like Kickstarter, so it's, it's appropriate in a different way. Um, but we, I agree with you that we're all searching for some solution. Um, when we started in Portland, our, most of our talk was convincing people that there was a problem in Contrib. And, and, uh, over the summer, there's been tons of blog posts. There's been all these great services launched. I think we're at the point now where we all understand something has to get better in Contrib that is not sustainable. So we have to stop the mindset that 
Um, this is a, um, a community where some people just give, give, give all the time and other people just take, take, take. That is t really not sustainable. So that, that needs to change. If, if, you, if you want uh, quality, um, you cannot expect people to work for free forever. So um, some, th th there needs to be some sort of uh, platform where people can, who are willing to put their money where their mouth is know that when they spend the money, it's going to a good cause, that they will get some value for money. Uh, for that, and that's where TSM com comes in. That's why TSM vets all those modules, so that you know if I support these guys, I'm getting bang for my buck. So first of all, we're in favor of all the other funding platforms: Git Tip, Drupal Fund Us, Chipin, Pitchin, even the Patch Ranger guy. Um, they're all great because we're all trying to solve the same problem, uh, just in slightly different ways. I think our solution is often appropriate where we're actually building relationships with these maintainers. So it's not just that I can commission a maintainer and say, well, uh, it'll be $3,000 to do this feature for me, and then we send him a check, and then we hope that he does it in time for it to be useful for my client, and he does a good job, and it actually meets the specs that we laid out back when it started. So there, that has happened, and with good developers, it's not a problem. But it, what we do is we provide all the assurances and the professionalism that's missing there, where we do QA, we do project management, where the buck stops with us. You can actually hold us accountable for the work that gets done. Um, and we think maintainers will naturally listen to us because we're giving them money, so they're going to like to work with us. Yeah, it's, it's people have to step up because this isn't sustainable. Uh, we're all in here working for free at this point for the last six, seven months. So it's been a long slog, and um, we're starting to get our first sponsors, and we sold a couple of beers for maintainers. Uh, Rick, I think, has received two or three. So it's getting there, but it does need to take off. It does need to be sustainable. Well, the biggest challenge we have, and I think everyone else in the space has, is making, getting that mind share, making it part of people's process, that I'm launching a site, I should give some money to contrib, or I'm architecting, or I'm building, or even I'm a client. Uh, clients, we tell them all the time, they have to do something for Drupal, they have to contribute back, and they have to help out. But we don't give them a lot of easy avenues for that. And just sponsoring some modules on an individual level, I think, is a great give back that they can do easily. Yeah, it, bef it benefits mm -hmm. the, uh, the supply and the demand side. So it's a better world. It's a win-win situation, really. And it, it creates an enormous synergy. So, the, so let's talk about why it's good for somebody um, that's a large shop um, or someone who's trying to build a product because there's now like 700 distributions. So the first thing is that um, if you're doing enterprise projects, uh, current contrib modules are not enterprise level. So that alone is very important to people. We sell Drupal as core plus contrib and right now our little asterisk underneath contrib is yeah, it kind of sort of works, and we need to change that if we want the adoption rate to grow. The second part is, is that we can actually improve margins for people that are hosting um, or running any kind of support platform um, like Pantheon, because a great deal of those, of those support tickets that require high-level engineers tend to be module-related. The other thing is that uh, Open Atrium just launched, beautiful product. Um, try it out on Pantheon, uh, it's amazing, but uh, Mike Potter used 183 contrib modules. Wow. Huge pain point. That's, that's a little bit inaccurate. There's actually, there is 183 modules, but there's about 140 that he said is actually in contrib, but that's still a huge number that's in a distribution. Um, and I think that's, that's amazing. You can see that there's a massive need for a high-level contrib, and that was very much a pain point for him. It takes a lot of development dollars to wrangle all these modules when you're trying to build something on top of it. If you're building on sand, it, your house is always going to rock. So not having solid contrib actually leads to a slowdown in products and other people scaling up um, non-service business in Drupal. And the last is just customer satisfaction. As engineers, we don't always think of the client experience. But if I can't download a module as um, the director of marketing and implement constant contact or, or whatever third party, 
and I'm disappointed by that, I might go with a proprietary. They may only have 20 great things that they do, but they work. Um, but we treat contrib modules as actual software projects. Like, we don't treat them as one-offs or like some guy is a hobbyist out in the middle of nowhere. Um, we say this, this is worthy of the full process, worthy of architecture, QA, project management, documentation, all the good stuff that you would do on a site, but we just never get around to. And so we help those, we help those maintainers become better and we give them assistance in the areas where they're not so great. Modules are real software projects. I like that. There's a lot of these things that already exist. There's already coding standards for Drupal. There's already um, some interface guidelines as well for Drupal, but they generally only apply at the core level. Why can't we apply those to the contrib level? And I think that's what we want to do. Um, so thanks for all that information on top shelf modules. Um, you, Susan and Carl, I believe, also have your side project, um, Dries Day. Now, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I know about Dries Day because uh, if you go to facebook.com slash Dries Day, <laughs> there's something up there. We all know that uh, his birthday is coming up soon. What is Dries Day, and why is it on the 19th of November? Well, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> um, what is Dries Day? It is a, an international Drupal holiday that we invented without asking Dries. Um, and the idea is that it's a, a community day. So uh, my initial goal was you, you should buy your favorite community member a beer on this day. Um, and if you don't have one, then you can buy one for Dries or anyone else. Um, but it then evolved into why don't we take that day and use it to volunteer on the Drupal project. Now, there's already thousands of volunteers, and to them it just sounds like another day in the week that they're, they're already doing the work. But there are tens or possibly hundreds of thousands of people that don't make it out to a camp, that don't regularly contribute, that can't participate in sprints. So we call this like a worldwide super sprint that everyone can participate in. You had me at beer, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I know what Drupal is like. <laughs> it's a great excuse for me to uh, post silly pictures of Dries everywhere, um, which I find amusing. Uh, some people think that it has to do with actually sort of worshipping Dries himself. Sometimes we get negative feedback from the community on that, um, which to me means they haven't really read it. Dries is a, a simple, he's a mascot that we use, not uh, an individual that... It's not, cult. It's <laughs> it's not, not a, a cult. cult of personality. Yeah. It's just, it's funny. And, and those that know him know he is so humble that it mortifies him that it's, a, it's called Dries Day. So it's really all in fun, and it is actually to include all the people that are are involved in Drupal in the world, because not everybody has a great community to be in, and it's someplace that we can we can work on together. And um, we did meet someone who was going to actually try to have some mentors available through video and um, like that. But So we do have a couple of requests. We, a we ask that all the companies take the day on November 19th to allow their team to work on, on Drupal. Uh, we encourage everyone not to think that this is just about code. It can be doing a tutorial, having a training, sponsoring a camp. Um, it, it is whatever part of Drupal lights you up, go do that. It can be spending the day tweeting and sharing Drupal up. It's not about what you do, it's just that you're there and you participate. And we will be creating a little sign so people can send back their picture that says how many hours that they donated. And we are trying to uh, give out prizes for people who organize the largest sprint, send us the funniest picture, or whatever. So we're collecting swag, so if you have t-shirts and sweatshirts and hoodies and things that you'd like to uh, get rid of because they're um, sitting around from past camps or out of date things, we'd love to get them. So. And I don't think we actually said um, that the reason it's November 19th is that it's Dries' birthday. Mm. Um, so he probably won't be participating at all. I think he'll be at home enjoying it uh, privately. What's the world headquarters for organizing all this Dries Day goodness. Is it the Facebook page? Yes. I think so, yeah. We'll be looking for, you know, the hashtag and event suggestions 
from you, and uh, sounds like a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Ryan Cross, Rick DeBoer, Carl Shirer, and Susan Rust from Top Shelf Modules for talking with me today. This is the Acquia podcast, and, uh, you know, let's see. I was going to say something cheesy like keep on drupling, but I don't have a closing tagline. Oh, so I let's say everybody get your ideas together for Dries Day, yeah. which is coming up November the 19th. Uh, go to facebook.com slash Dries Day where there will be uh, suggestions and activities and uh, these good people are looking for swag and help and large sprints and all sorts of great contributions. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to talk with me and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you all soon somewhere. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Thank you, Rick. Great work.